Here is Thomas Sowell's introduction to slavery in his book Applied Economics, Thinking Beyond Stage 1, Chapter 2, Free and Unfree Labor. A student asked his history professor, where did slavery come from? You're asking the wrong question, the history professor replied. The real question is, where did freedom come from? Slavery is one of the oldest and most universal of all human institutions. Slavery has existed among peoples around the world as far back as recorded history goes, and archaeological explorations suggest that it existed before human beings learned to write. No one knows when slavery began. It is the idea of freedom for the great masses of ordinary people that is relatively new as history is measured, and this idea is by no means universally accepted around the world even today. Slavery was stamped out over most of the world during the course of the 19th century, but it still survives here and there in the 21st century. Moreover, there has been, and still are, other kinds of unfree labor besides slavery. One of the many freedoms we take for granted today is the right to choose what kind of work we will and will not do. Yet for many centuries, there was no such choice for most people in most countries. If you were the son of a shoemaker, then your job would be to make shoes. And if you were the daughter of a farmer, there were a whole range of chores that you would perform while growing up and a still larger range of domestic responsibilities waiting for you after marriage. The difference between free and unfree labor in such times was whether or not you were paid for your work or were forced to do it without financial compensation. Forced laborers might be temporary and range from drudgery in the fields of the nobility or serving under the same nobles in their military campaigns, after which you were allowed to return to your own farming, or to your own work. People who were far less fortunate were full-time and lifelong serfs or slaves, with the status also being inherited by their children. While free labor has become the norm in much of the world today, compulsory labor still survives, even in free democratic countries in such forms as military drafts and compulsory jury duty. Outright slavery still exists in a few other countries, such as Mauritania, Sudan, and Nigeria. In remote parts of India, family members still remain in bondage over the generations because of debts contracted by some ancestor before they were born. A situation sometimes called debt peonage and sometimes called simply slavery in one of its variations. Despite the sharp dichotomy, between free and unfree labor in principle, in practice, those who are free may nevertheless have many restrictions imposed on them by laws and policies, such as requirements to get an occupational license or belong to a labor union in order to work in some occupations, when in fact either union memberships or the necessary licenses may be arbitrarily limited in numbers, the wholly voluntary agreement between employer and employee in a free market exists as a model but not always as a reality. The employer's freedom to hire whoever will work for him is heavily circumscribed by child labor laws, anti-discrimination laws, and other regulations and policies, as well as by labor union contracts. At the other end of the spectrum, even some slaves had options, especially urban slaves, many of whom chose their own employers and simply shared their earnings with slave owners who let them exercise this option. This practice existed as far back as ancient Greece, where some slaves lived and worked away from their owners and simply paid the owners some share of their earnings. Jason Brennan says, In the end, it turns out that renting a slave to work your plantation for one year could cost ten times as much as hiring an Indian to grow cotton for you in India. Slaves weren't particularly a good deal and were not particularly low-cost labor. This is in response to the claim that cheap labor made America rich. Of course, if you go back to the code of Yernamu, 2,000 years before Christ was said to walk the face of the earth, they are talking about 
ways to treat your slave. If a slave marries a slave and that slave is set free, he does not leave the household. If a slave marries a native, i.e. free person, he or she is to hand the firstborn son over to his owner. Slavery has, in fact, existed since the beginning of time. Contrary to what the critical race theorists tell us today, that slavery was invented by Thomas Jefferson in 1776. Thank you for watching Keith Knight. Don't tread on anyone in the Libertarian Institute.